Welcome to This Week in Ames. I'm Kate Tyndall, subbing for Susan Guiazda. On today's show, we'll learn about a celebration coming up for resource recovery. Our guest for this week is Lori Hansen. Lori, welcome to the show. Thanks, Kate. So, I teased our audience with a celebration coming up for your department. Can you tell us a little bit about this celebration? We're pretty excited, too. This year will mark our 40th year of diverting garbage from the landfills. Okay, uh, so how are you celebrating this? Well, we plan to have an open house on Saturday, September 19th, from 10 to noon and we invite all of our supporters, our partners, and anybody who's interested in waste to energy or just simply what to do with the stuff that you don't want anymore to come on down to the plant and get a good education on what we do with garbage here in Story County. What's going to be at the open house? I'm curious. Do you know yet? Well, we hope to have some videos running of different processes throughout the plant and this will be a time when folks can actually walk through the process area to see what we do in there other than from just the observation windows upstairs. Okay. There is a lot of things that may change after 40 years of being open. Can you talk to us a little bit about those Boy, changes? Boy, I'll say. We have had pieces of equipment um, be discontinued. We have added some pieces of equipment to help us to do our job more effectively as well as get more out of the waste stream and keep it out of the landfill. So really there have been plenty of changes over the years. Can you give us one example, a special example? For instance, the Atlas bin is the storage bin between us and the power plant that was originally installed for 1975. And we changed that out in 1995-96 for a newer, higher technology storage bin that was um, garbage first in, first out to the boiler, whereas the Atlas bin was first in, last out, which caused a lot of maintenance problems for the power plant. How do these changes help people use your facility easily or maybe more easily than they did even 40 years ago? 40 years ago I think it was difficult for folks to get used to taking their garbage someplace other than to the dump or the landfill. But since we've, we've opened the resource recovery facility we are educating more and getting the word out there that this is how we do garbage in Story County now. And some of the changes that we've made that will make it easier for folks to use the plant is signage on the outside of the building directing you where to put your vehicle and where to throw your garbage and um, different things like that. So we've got this educational, we've also got the, uh, what did you call it, an open house? Yes, Coming the up. open house. Can you house? remind people of the date and time for that? That will be Saturday, September 19th from 10 to noon. Okay, and then let's talk a little bit about some of the things that Resource Recovery does. You've got the single stream recycling. Can you explain to people what single stream recycling actually is? It simply means that all you need to get rid of the most of the garbage in your home is right there in your garbage can. You don't need a recycling bin for the paper, the newspaper, the cardboard, the tin cans, things like that. All you need is your garbage can. You put everything in your garbage can except for the glass container. Containers. We have several yellow bins at the grocery stores in Ames and other communities in the county where you can take your container glass, drop it in the bright yellow bin, and that'll come to the plant then every Friday and be dumped onto the tipping floor so that we can deal with it then. You've covered glass. But what about things like household hazardous waste, paint, things like those? We hold household hazardous waste appointments every Wednesday afternoon starting at 1230 and running through 3 o'clock in 10 minute increments. We encourage folks to go through their homes and find any oil-based paint or stains or basically anything that says warning, caution, combustible, flammable, inflammable, toxic, poison. So anything that would be for your vehicle, your automotive products or your cleaning products for inside your home or lawn and garden chemicals, pet products, all those kinds of things are what we're looking for to stay out of the garbage and come into the plant safely on Wednesday afternoons by appointment and no charge. And people have to call ahead for those appointments I'm yes, guessing? Yes, yes, so that we can be prepared to accept the amount that we're expecting that day. 
And then what about unique items? We're talking about American flags, used needles. How do people dispose of those correctly? Because there are different ways to get rid of those things correctly, correct? Yes, yes. We don't want to just throw away the American flag because it's disrespectful. And we work with the American Legion here in Ames to properly dispose of those flags through their ceremonies to get that done. But we do have a container on our tipping floor for folks to just bring their flags down and deposit in that container to keep it out of the garbage and make sure that we get to d uh, dispose of those properly. Now for the needles or the sharps, we also have a container on the tipping floor. We do keep it locked so that when folks come in, we need to come over and unlock that for you to deposit your sharps container or your laundry detergent container duct taped shut into the big container so that we can dispose of it safely. Do people need to make appointments for those just like they need to make with household hazardous waste? No, those containers are available anytime during our open hours, Monday through Friday, 7 to 3.30, or Saturdays, 8 to noon. Summer's on upon us now, and people are maybe cleaning out some closets, things like that. Do people need to know anything about summer, or are there any challenges that come with summer that people should know about resource recovery? I think so. First of all, if you're if you're a mom like me, you may need to go through your kids' clothes to make sure that they have proper summer attire. And of course, once you pull out last year's summer clothes, you find that they've grown and nothing fits anymore. Rather than throwing those away, we would encourage you to take them to Goodwill industries, even if you think that they are not good enough for someone else to wear, they will turn them into rags. And so we encourage you to take all clothing, regardless of the wear factor, to Goodwill Industries for disposal or continued use. Um, Let's see. It is the picnic season too, isn't it? And yes, so it if you are picnicking and you have paper utensils and paper plates and tablecloths and so forth, then you need to make sure that you get everything picked up at the end of your fun time and into the proper receptacle or, as in some state parks and county parks, you need to pack it out with you. Or just take in plastic forks and spoons and knives, washable forks and spoons and knives and tableware so that you can reuse it again after you've washed it at home. Also, if you're using a gas grill, mm -hmm. you may be using a little camp stove where you have the handheld propane tanks. Don't throw those away, even if you shake it and think it's empty, because there is still fumes or vapor in there that will explode if it goes through our shredder. So any propane tank, 25 pounds and under, bring that into us at no charge. Hand it to us and we'll make sure it gets disposed of properly. Okay, Lori, a lot of things to think about with the summer and your celebration coming up for yes. 40 years of resource recovery. Yes. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thanks for having me, Kate. Also coming up with summer is Ames Municipal Band Concerts. The first is this week on Thursday. Those concerts are held every Thursday night starting at 8 p.m. To find out what times and dates those concerts are held, you can visit cityofames.org, go to the About Ames tab at the top of the screen, and then go to the calendar of events. That's all, and tune in next week for This Week in Ames.